Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. This is the post-fight review for Nathan Gorman vs. Pavel Sauer. And Nathan Gorman, he was due for a good performance, and he delivered. I think a lot of fans have seen the skills and potential in Nathan Gorman, but seemingly he hasn't been able to put it together for some time. But an aggressive Gorman who went after Pavel Sauer gets the stoppage in the second round, Five knockdowns along the way. Yes, this is a Nathan Gorman fight. Five knockdowns. Three in the first round and uh, two in the second. Um, the first one actually was a power jab. Um, Pavel Sauer just walked onto it and he was put down. And at about that point, I sort of was looking at the body language from Pavel Sauer and thought, yeah, I don't like what I'm seeing here. And it was kind of a, a procession from there. He just kind of, um, any big punch that landed was down. And it was over about midway through the second round. So from that first knockdown, which was pretty heavy, that power jab, which dropped him to the canvas. Yeah, it was, um, the writing was on the wall for Sauer. But Gorman unusually aggressive here and from the first bell came out looking for Sauer and let his hands go something we really haven't seen too often and the one time we've seen that before it went horribly wrong against Daniel Dubois so this was a very good performance he was accurate landing very hard and heavy shots and it did look like that there was a bit more pop in those punches that he was just sitting down on them a bit more but I guess when the guy in front of you is maybe a top 80 or a top 100 guy and you don't rate his power I guess you can afford to do that and Gorman in the post fight did talk about that he was training for the knockout that he did want to come out and make a statement and he certainly did and it was a statement of sorts given some of the recent performances, you can think Richard Larty last time out, which was just a ho-hum effort. There has been a pattern in a lot of Gorman fights. He looks reasonably slick for a few rounds, and then he sort of goes into um, an energy sort of saving workman-like mode where he boxes the rounds and it's all the same, and it just sort of almost puts you to sleep. But not not tonight. This was different. Five knockdowns en route to a, a, a second round stoppage. Um, Peter Fury, uh, sorry, John Fury, I should say, who was uh, doing a bit of commentary for the BT team after the fight, he said the weight is a little bit of a concern because Gorman was 272 pounds, but he said, look, he got the job done tonight, so obviously didn't hamper him tonight, but he said he does need to get it down a little bit. And um, Gorman himself said, yes, he does need to drop a few pounds, but he did emphasize not much more than he is now because he's 272. He was 273 last time out against Richard Larty, which was his then career high. But he said he doesn't want to drop back down to sort of where he was for the Daniel Dubois fight, which is about 20 pounds away because he says he feels weak as a kitten when he drops that much weight. And based on what we saw tonight, sitting down on those shots and really um, connecting good accuracy and the power did actually look noticeably more. Maybe there's something there. So if he's coming in 260, 265, maybe that could work for him. But bearing in mind, we have to keep expectations and check a little bit and not sort of overrate this performance too much because it was Pavel Sauer, a guy who's been stopped in a round by Philip Hergovich, three rounds by Huey Fury, and now two rounds by Nathan Gorman. And you have to say, given that um, Jermaine Franklin was taken the distance by Pavel Sauer, that performance by Franklin against Sauer is looking less impressive by the day, especially when someone who's considered a bit of a non-puncher in the heavyweight division in Nathan Gorman is rocking um, Sauer to his boots and dropping him five times along the way to a second round stoppage but um, yeah make of that what you will so also Gorman spoke about the what next he wants to have a British title shot or a Commonwealth title shot but some of that is dependent on Joe Joyce vacating those belts which it looks like he probably will do at some point but he wants to remain active he wants to fight in the next six to eight weeks he doesn't want to have a long layoff or put on weight and then have to drop it again he wants to stay busy have something to work towards um, of David Adelaide because Adelaide after his win uh, over Dave Preston which was the night before this fight which I'll get to in a moment I'll just briefly cover that off soon um Adelaide had called him out but Nathan Gorman said look the guy's like what 4-0 5-0 oh, 
what's in this for me what's the point of fighting this guy i'm ready to be competing and fighting for titles now the guy still got a lot of work to do we're at different stages so for the moment nathan gorman swerving that fight but he made some good points and there's some rhyme to the reason about why this fight shouldn't happen now and realistically with adelaide you know sort of four or five fights in he still needs another year or 18 months really to, to develop and just keep learning on the job before he is, is in those sorts of fights with Gorman. But I like that fight for when eventually it does happen because I think Adelaide is only going to get better and better. Whereas I think maybe we will see a little bit of up and down with Nathan Gorman, but I think when Gorman steps up to another level, it's going to be a much tougher fight than Pavel Sowers, those sort of fights of the world. But in terms of a fight I wouldn't mind seeing in the next sort of six to 12 months, you have these new arrivals in Frank Warren Stable, co-promoted guys like Zahn Kosobutsky and also um, Peter Milas, who is now working with Frank Warren. I think that Peter Milas versus Nathan Gorman, highly competitive fight at this point, maybe a 50-50. And I think Zahn Kosobutsky, is, if he was, and he's a world-rated heavyweight now, after winning the WBA international title, Zahn Kosobutsky beats Nathan Gorman right now no issues and if they're truly looking to sort of build Zan Kosobutsky into eliminators and title shots the, the a Gorman sort of fight that sort of level makes perfect sense but for Gorman maybe less so and after a performance like that uh, he will feel that he's starting to build some momentum to for maybe some domestic level fights for um, a British title or potentially even a Commonwealth title so so maybe he's not really looking at a Kosobutsky fight but there is some good fights to be had here and I think Nathan Gorman on the strength of that performance a few people will be a little bit surprised but also I think heartened that actually he's delivered he's put on a good performance because he was due but what did you make of that and just quickly David Adelaide, so I didn't do a post-fight review on this because it was all over in half a round. So Frank Warren's put on two shows and two nights. The, uh, David Adelaide was on the first one against a debutante in Dave Preston. Preston um, sort of pitched in late on because the previous opponent uh, was out of the fight. So um, it was his first fight, pretty much lamb to the slaughter. And it was the, the first real hard punch of the fight that landed a vicious left hook that um, caught Dave Preston and uh, he couldn't answer the count stopped in the first round so David Adelaide advanced to 5-0 and on the strength of that hard to say what he really gets out of it because it was what it was in the end and yeah he looked good in what he was doing there but it was all over very quickly but drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared I'm out